Welcome to another episode of Will It Digest. We asked what you wanted to see digested and somebody said tequila. Woo! Now you're talking. And I just happen to have some right here, left over from Cinco de Mayo, of course. Oh. Hmm. Looks like we may have had a little more than I thought. Hey, Macy. <laughs> do you have anything to drink? Sure do, Howie. Got a beer, hmm. cider, Woo. and a vodka. Wow, you're stuck. But this episode is on tequila. I just happen to have some right up my sleeve. Hmm. And while you're at it, you're gonna need these. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Macy. Should I ask you why you have so much alcohol at work? Woo! Uh, we'll save that for another day. All right, to make this more encompassing, we will look at a variety of alcoholic beverages, including tequila, vodka, a beer, and cider. All of these contain ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Alcohols are organic substances and can release a lot of combustion gases during digestion. This is especially true of wine, which also contains sugars. For this reason, we always recommend a pre-digestion step prior to sealing the vessel. Another thing to consider on beverages like beer or cider is that they are carbonated with CO2 gas. It is important to degas the liquids prior to sealing and digestion to get rid of the dissolved carbon dioxide. A couple of techniques can be performed in sequence to ensure complete removal of all the gas. You can perform the prescribed FDA EAM 2.1 sonication method, followed by adding your acid, and then conducting the CEM recommended pre-digestion step. I wonder if I could combine the sonication and the pre-digestion. We'll save that for a different episode. Aww. When working with reactive samples like these, sample size is critical due to the potential of a runaway exothermic reaction. Today's sample, again, include tequila, vodka, beer, and cider. For all of these samples, we're going to measure out 5 mils with a non-metallic transfer pipette and add in 5 mils of nitric acid. You may notice that once again, I'm using the Mars Express 75 mil set. This is going to allow for maximum sample throughput and allow me the opportunity to mix batches like we're doing here. So now here is our tequila. Yes, that was weighed and measured appropriately. Woo! And our five mils of nitric acid. Now that this is my last vessel, I'm going to put it in the turntable and I'll meet you guys over at the Mar 6. Okay, now that we have the turntable in the Mar 6, we need to select our method. We don't have a one-touch method for alcohol, but never fear. Since these alcohols are made from plant material, let's use that one. Now, we're just going to press start and let the Mar 6 have a little fiesta. Before we head to the history portion, you may be wondering where would heavy metals and alcoholic beverages come from? Well, metals could be introduced from a variety of sources. These include the plant itself, which can uptake metals from the soil, and water used for irrigation. Metals can also come from equipment used during brewing, distillation, filtration, and storage of the product. As a result, a variety of metalloids and metals have been detected in alcoholic beverages such as arsenic, cadmium, chromium, cobalt, copper, iron, manganese, nickel, tin, lead, and zinc. Now for the history. Tequila was first produced in the 16th century near what would become the city of tequila. A fermented beverage from the agave plant known as pulque was consumed in central Mexico before European contact. When the Spanish conquistadors ran out of their brandy, they began to distill agave to produce one of North America's first indigenous distilled spirits. <laughs> Spain's King Carlos IV granted the Cuervo family the first license to commercially make tequila. Don Zenobio Salsa, founder of Salsa Tequila, was the first to export it to the United States in the 1880s. Like champagne, tequila is assigned an appellation of origin status. 
which limits production to five Mexican states, Guanajuato, Jalisco, Michoacan, Nayarit, and Tamaulipas. To be classified as tequila, a bottle must be at least 51% blue agave, agave tequilana. The higher the percentage of blue agave, the finer the bottle. Agave plants are grown from 8 to 10 years to become mature. The harvester, or hemidor, removes the agave leaves with a sharp curved tool, the koa, to get to the heart, or the piña, as it's called. The piñas are then cut into similar size pieces and loaded into an autoclave, which essentially cooks them and readies them for the next process where they were crushed, shredded, and then pressed and washed with water. This extracts the agave liquid. The agave water is then fermented with yeast, much like beer. The mash is then distilled at least twice. It is then filtered and bottled to make silver or blanco, or stored in barrels to produce an aged product. Almost all containers used in tequila agent are French or American white oak barrels that have been previously used to age bourbon. Reposados <laughs> are aged between 2 and 12 months. Añejos are aged between one and three years, and extra añejos are aged for more than three years. The longer the tequila ages, the more color and tannins the final product will have. One last thing about the worm. Ew. Well, actually, it is not a worm, but a moth larva, and it's only used in mezcal. You see, mezcal can be produced from up to 50 species of the agave plant, while tequila can be made from just one, Weber Blue Agave. So now we know where tequila came from and how it is made, and we can go back to our samples. All right, now that our samples are digested and cooled, let's open them up, check out our quality of digest. You know what, guys? Cue the music. All right, first we're gonna start with our beer. Now remember we did some sonication and pre-digest. So uh, still a nice generation of decomposition gases there. All right, looks good, looks good. All right, now we'll finish our dilution. Looks fantastic. All right, now let's move on to our cider. Let's see what kind of gas we have with this one. Oh, excellent, excellent. I'm expecting some quality digest here. Finish this. Uh, once again, clear colorless. Looks fantastic. Now let's move on to our vodka. And we're three for three. Everybody keep your fingers crossed for the tequila. That's right, here we go. The star of the show. Let's do our last transfer here. All right, so well, let me finish cleaning up over here and I'll meet you guys back at the bench. Okay, I have finished diluting the samples. Let's take a look. We've got our beer, Ooh. cider, ah. vodka, Ooh. and of course, tequila. Ah. As you can see, all samples came out clear, colorless, and particle free. So can we digest tequila with a side of vodka, beer, and cider? Do Americans drink more tequila on Cinco de Mayo than any other day of the year? Yes, and yes we can. <laughs> Whew. All right guys, it's five o'clock somewhere. Anybody wanna come join me? Hello? Hey, all right, there you are, guys. All right, everybody, 
Take one. All right, you ready? Cheers. 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 Salute. Excellent. Done. We've got another winner here.